This is a Joe Frogger, an 18th century cookie. Or they say back in the 18th century in Marblehead, Massachusetts, there was an African-American couple named Joe and Lucretia. Joe ran some kind of a public house or restaurant and Lucretia helped out with that. And one of the things Lucretia came up with were these cookies made from uh, rum and molasses and a lot of spices. And because they ended up looking like the lily pads on the nearby pond that was full of frogs, they became known as Joe Froggers. And they were so popular that ships would order barrels of these cookies and take them with them on trips. Now, how accurate is any of that? Well, we do know that Joe and Lucretia seem to have existed uh, somewhere in or near Marblehead, Massachusetts. They were involved in some kind of a pub or restaurant. As to the name Frogger relating to that and uh, exactly uh, their relationship with the cookie, still not entirely clear. And here is the recipe, or should I say the modern recipe. Um, things have changed a lot in the culinary world since uh, the 18th century. And so, for example, sugar used to come in these cakes you have to scrape off. Um, they would have used lard in the original recipe instead of butter or shortening. So these are a modern version. And it's also a way in which this may have um, uh, varied from the original is just their consistency. When I made these, they ended up quite soft. Uh, in fact, that's that's uh, right, there we go. Um, quite soft, and I actually like that quite a bit. But that means that you get um, a very different consistency than what is reported in some of the legends, which describe these as very hard cookies, almost like hard tack. So that could be just how things have changed. I'm not quite sure. Now this comes together in the traditional cookie way. You mix the dry ingredients together, you mix the wet ingredients together, then you mix both of those together and put them out on baking sheets. And when you do, you have a couple of different options. Um, these uh, can be just rolled out into balls and baked and you get a, a sort of lumped um, cookies. But the more traditional way is to flatten them. The um, recipes I've seen, some of them have you roll out the dough. I find that's not very helpful. They do definitely need to be chilled for a while. The dough needs some, some chilling to sort of firm up. But then I found rolling them out wasn't particularly helpful. Um, you can do two things. You can either just drop them on the baking sheet, in which case they will be fairly lumpy. Um, not lumpy, but they will be you know, rounded. Um, or you can put them out down there and flatten them. And one tip there, if you put a sheet of wax paper between the cookie or the dough cookie, cookie dough, and the flat thing and then flatten them, then you won't get the bottom of your flat thing covered in cookie dough and it, they won't stick and so forth and so on. Um, then you have some um, other options in terms of topping. Some recipes um, recommend rolling them in sugar and some not. And so if you see the difference here, um, here are some Joe Frogger's um, not rolled in sugar, just sort of flattened there on the, um, um, uh, uh, just flattened there. And then these are the same things rolled in sugar. And you might be able to tell there's a little bit of, yeah, you can tell the granulate, granulated, granulated sugar there. Um, this adds some sweetness, obviously, and a little bit of crunch to the outside. I actually prefer them this way. I think it adds some, uh, some nice sweetness to the um, fairly intense spiciness of the cookie. Or you can roll them in sugar and not flatten them, in which case they'll end up looking like this. And you can see this is a, a much more raised cookie, and that's just kind of up to you. Again, this is more traditional, and this is a, a new version. And if you look at this, these actually look a lot like soft ginger snaps. Uh, in fact, I um, growing up, my mom used to make uh, these soft ginger snaps, and um, I actually made some recently, and here's what they look like. Just a spiced cookie. There's no rum in these, a little molasses. And so this is what a soft ginger snap looks like these days. I do have to wonder if this isn't an adaptation of Joe Frogger cookies. Um, they certainly do come across like, you know, almost the same. In fact, let's, eh, I mean, that's pretty much the same cookie there. So I think we, found, we may have found a, uh, the originator of soft ginger snaps if you're used to those. So when you eat these, you will find that, like I said, it's pretty strong um, spice flavor, a little bit of rum, noticeable in there, but not, not too crazy. And to be clear, it's two tablespoons of rum for the entire batch of cookies. And this will make several dozen cookies. So it's very, very little. Um, 
but yeah, it's a it's a relatively intense spice. Uh, a lot of molasses in here, um, and I, I find them to be very hard to put down. Um, you know, you start eating these, and you're like, oh, that's an interesting flavor. Ooh, ooh, there's some depth there. Um, and I think that's what I really like about these is that a lot of cookies are kind of one note, um, or maybe two notes. So chocolate chip cookies tend to be, you know, the doughiness of the cookies and then the, the chocolate chips. Um, there are there's enough going on here. You can really tell and and taste some complexity to these cookies. So those are Joe Frogger's cookies. Hope you found that useful, and maybe you'll go out and try to make them.